In this section, we will discuss scalable OFDMA or scalable orthogonal frequency division multiple access, which is employed in IEEE 802.16e or mobile WiMAX, and it offers a number of key benefits that we will discuss in this section. For a complete description of scalable OFDMA, take a look at the article by Hassan Yagobi in the Intel Technology Journal published in 2004. The ideas that we present here are, are mainly due to Yagobi's article. So before we proceed, let's take a look at what kind of uh, RMS delay spread we may encounter in a mobile environment or what is uh, one of the worst case situations. According to the Stanford University Interim Model Number 6, which was a terrain type A hilly terrain with moderate to heavy tree densities, the RMS delay spread was 5.24 microseconds. However, the ITU has a vehicle channel Model B that shows that the delay spread can change and vary all the way up to 20 microseconds in a mobile environment. So let's take the ITU uh, 20 microseconds RMS delay spread as our RMS delay spread that we will use. Now, when you design an OFDM system, you have to make sure that the spacing between the carriers and an OFDM system are such that on a per carrier basis you have flat fading. So you have to know what the RMS delay spread is of the channel that you are going to transmit over. In order to achieve flat fading, you have to compute the coherence bandwidth for the multipath channel. And if you look at the expression here, we have that the coherence bandwidth for a RMS delay spread of 20 microseconds is equal to 1 over 5 times the RMS delay spread, or it's equal to 10 kilohertz. This is the typical expression that is used for the coherence bandwidth related to the inverse of the RMS delay spread, and in some situations, another factor other than 5 is used. But if we use this expression for the coherence bandwidth, and what this says is that if we space the carriers in an OFDM system that we intend to use over a frequency select fading channel in which the RMS delay spread is 20 microseconds, then we have to have at least 10 kilohertz spacing between the carriers in order that each carrier exhibits a flat fading over a frequency selected fading multipath channel. So in the discussion to follow on scalable OFDMA, this is a key parameter. In the mobile environments that we will encounter in mobile WiMAX, we are going to be in a situation where the coherence bandwidth is 10 kilohertz, so the minimum spacing between the carriers in an OFDM system designed for mobile WiMAX should at least be 10 kilohertz or smaller. Now, if we need to have 10 kilohertz carrier spacing, the issue arises that what happens when you use different bandwidths and different number of points in the FFT for the implementation of your OFDM system? What if we want to keep the carrier spacing constant, although we transmit over different bandwidths in order to achieve different throughputs? And of course, if we sometimes lower the bandwidth, we get extended range. So in either case, when we change the bandwidth, we would like to keep the carrier spacing at least 10 kilohertz. We do not want to exceed 10 kilohertz, and it doesn't make any sense to go below 10 kilohertz if we can avoid that. So let's take a look at the, by the way, we will explain why you don't want to reduce the intercarrier spacing. You run into other issues that we'll deal with in terms of both the oscillator phase noise and the Doppler shift. Now here's the expression for computing the sampling rate in OFDMA native to dot 16 2005 we know that we actually use an oversampling by factor 8 over 7, and this is the expression we use in order to compute the sampling rate given the bandwidth, BW. And of course, we support multiple bandwidths. We'll get into that. We'll show you the bandwidths that we actually use. Now, we also have the expression for the carrier spacing, which is equal to the sampling rate divided by the number of points in the FFT. So this, by definition, is the carrier spacing. Now, if we take a close look at this expression here, what this expression says is that if we want to keep delta F constant, then as we increase the bandwidth, or therefore F sub S, we need to increase the number of points in the FFT. If we decrease the bandwidth, and therefore decrease the sampling rate, in order to keep delta F constant, we need to decrease the number of points in the FFT. So this is the idea in scalable OFDMA, in which we actually scale the number of points in the FFT 
with the bandwidth. As we increase the bandwidth, we increase the number of points in the FFT. If we decrease the bandwidth, we decrease the number of points in the FFT, keeping the carrier spacing constant. At one end, we don't want to increase the carrier spacing because that will violate the flat fading requirement that we need per carrier. And as we'll discuss, if you increase the number of FFT points but keep the bandwidth fixed, then the carrier spacing becomes too small and you run into issues regarding Doppler and also offset or phase noise. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of keeping the carrier spacing fixed and such that it doesn't actually decrease as you decrease the bandwidth and you also increase the number of points in the FFT. So here's the problem. If we keep the number of FFT points the same and decrease the bandwidth, then the carrier spacing becomes very small. For example, if you kept the number of FFT points constant but you reduce the bandwidth, then the spacing between the carriers would become very small. Now this creates a problem when you have phase noise in the system. You also have a problem with intercarrier interference due to Doppler spread. Let's take a look at this uh, diagram here and I refer you to the tutorial on phase noise in OFDM systems. So basically we're showing the carriers for OFDM and because of the phase noise in the oscillator we actually show the phase noise shown here and you can see that as the carriers become closer and closer to each other the intercarrier interference due to the phase noise increases considerably so by actually spacing out the carriers further away we reduce the intercarrier interference due to phase noise considerably so there's a problem with actually decreasing the carrier spacing due to phase noise there's also another problem with decreasing the carrier spacing because of Doppler shift so let's get into that here we show basically the base station with a vehicle moving toward the base station we have a maximum Doppler shift that is equal to F sub M is equal to the velocity which is equal to the velocity of the vehicle divided by the wavelength but the wavelength is equal to the speed of light divided by the carrier frequency so as obviously as we increase the carrier frequency we decrease the wavelength and increase the maximum Doppler shift. So if we look at this table over here we're basically showing the carrier frequency in gigahertz and the computed maximum Doppler shift in hertz given a vehicle speed of 35 meters per second which is about 126 kilometers per hour. So for a carrier frequency of 3.5 gigahertz we see that the maximum Doppler shift is 408 hertz as we increase the carrier frequency we get maximum Doppler shift of 700 hertz. Now there was a very important paper published entitled The Bounds on the Inter-Channel Interference of OFTM and Time Varying Impairments shown over here back in March 2001 in which the author calculated the upper bounds for the power of the intercarrier interference due to Doppler shift in a mobile fading channel environment. So basically due to Doppler shift and the Doppler power spectral density we have intercarrier interference and this expression here shows the upper bound on the intercarrier interference. And this is a great expression, I refer you to the paper for the derivation, an excellent result, which basically shows that the power of the intercarrier interference increases with the Doppler shift, which makes sense. The faster the vehicle then the more intercarrier interference we have. It also indicates that it is proportional to the uh, square of the symbol time, the duration of the OFDM symbol. And the symbol time is related to the inverse of the carrier spacing. So if we replace T sub S by 1 over delta F, which is a carrier spacing, then we get the expression over here. So what then this expression shows that if we increase the carrier spacing then we dramatically decrease the intercarrier interference due to the mobile fading channel due to the Doppler shift. So one of the goals in designing a system for a mobile fading channel with Doppler is to actually increase the spacing between the carriers. Of course we have a limit on the increase increasing the spacing of the carrier because we have to maintain a flat fading for each individual carrier so we can arbitrarily increase the spacing of the carrier. Previously we showed that for the RMS delay spreads encountered in a mobile environment 
we calculated that the carrier spacing was 10 kilohertz. Now, if we use uh, delta F, we plug back delta F in here for using 10 kilohertz, and we also use the uh, F of D, which is the maximum Doppler shift, equal to 408 hertz, corresponding to a vehicle at 35 meters per second, and a carrier frequency of 3.5 gigahertz. And if we plug that into this expression, we get that the intercarrier interference power is less than minus 23 dB, which is an acceptable level in order to still maintain orthogonality between the OFDM carriers. And by the way, we still have pilot tracking that can even combat the variation of the channel due to Doppler. And I refer you to the tutorial on pilot tracking for that subject. So basically what we're saying is that because of the mobile environment, and in order to have flat fitting per OFDM carrier, then we need the spacing between the carriers to be 10 kilohertz. And for a vehicle speed of 35 meters per second and a carrier of 3.5 gigahertz, we, we find out that the intercarrier interference is acceptable. It's minus, uh, less than minus 23 dB for a carrier spacing of 10 kilohertz. So again, the scalable OFDMA works in this case where we're trying to keep the carrier spacing constant as we increase the bandwidth in order to increase the throughput and we scale the number of points in the FFT with the bandwidth. Here's another parameter which is the coherence time. As we know the coherence time is uh, related to the inverse of the Doppler spread. This expression here is due to Rappaport and is the coherence time to be used when you have Doppler spread. So you put plug in the maximum Doppler spread and you get the coherence time. And let's refer to this table here. So at 3.5 gigahertz, we're looking at a coherence time of uh, 1 milliseconds, which means that we expect the channel to change rapidly within 1 millisecond. So we need to track the changes in the channel on a at least a 1 kilohertz rate. And again, I refer you to the tutorial on pilot tracking in order to in order to get more in depth how to track a rapid fading ready channel due to Doppler shift or vehicle motion. In particular how we use the pilots on a per symbol basis in order to estimate the channel and update the channel as it changes. So this expression is uh, useful in terms of getting a rough idea of how fast you need to update the channel as it goes through fading due to the motion of a vehicle in a mobile wireless environment. So here's a good table in order to summarize a lot of the issues we just discussed about scalable OFDMA. These are the actual parameters that are used in uh, IEEE 802.16e. So we have system bandwidth of 1.25 MHz, 2.5 MHz, 5 and 10 and 20 MHz. And many times you're using 5 and 10 for example. The sampling frequency, using the expression we mentioned, which was 8 over 7, and we use over sampling, so the sampling frequency is directly related to the uh, bandwidth. So the sample time is the inverse of the sampling frequency, so here it's shown in nanoseconds. Now here's the key parameter for scalable OFDMA, and that is that as we increase the bandwidth, we also scale up the number of points in the FFT such that the ratio of the sampling rate to the number of points in the FFT is constant and it's equal to 11.161 kilohertz. So for every case here if you take the sampling rate and divide it by the number of points in the FFT you get the carrier spacing, the subcarrier spacing which in every case is going to be 11.161 which, by the way, guarantees us flat fitting, flat fitting for every carrier in a mobile environment with 20 microsecond RMS delay spread. Now, T sub B is the useful symbol time. It's equal to 1 over the carrier spacing, as we've mentioned many times in OFDM. In this case, it's equal to 89.6 microseconds. And that would always be the same no matter what system bandwidth you're using. Now, the guard interval in this case is 1 over 8. Now, recall that you can have up to four different uh, cyclic prefixes. Here we're using the case where it's 1 over 8. 
So the guard interval is TB over 8, which in this case is 11.2 microseconds. And if we add the two, we get the total OFDM symbol time, which is 100.8 microseconds. Now, it's very important to note that when you increase the bandwidth, then you actually increase the throughput through the system, but you also decrease the range. So the fact is that depending on the range between the mobile station and the base station, you can support lower or higher bandwidths in order to support lower or higher throughputs given the environment that you're working with. Let's take a look at how you compute the throughput based on the parameters in this table. So let's go back to the expression we had for the data rate in an OFDM system. In an OFDM system, every OFDM symbol carries a number of carriers which are associated with the data. So for example, we exclude the pilots and we exclude the guard intervals and the left and right and the null at DC and you're left with the number of carriers which actually have data and let's call that n sub data. Each carrier carries b sub m number of bits. So for example for a QAM, a 64 QAM system, then each carrier is a symbol on the constellation and it has and it represents six coded bits. So we have two to the six or sixty-four symbols in the constellation. Now if we multiply the number the coded bits by the code rate, then we actually get the number of bits per carrier associated with data. So if we multiply that by the number of carriers that we have that carry data, then we get the actual number of bits data bits within an OFDM symbol and if we divide that by the duration of the OFDM symbol then we get the data rate. Now the OFDM symbol itself is equal to T sub B plus the cyclic prefix which in our case for example is T sub B divided by 8. So we can express T sub S in terms of T sub B and recall that T sub B was 1 over delta F which was the carrier spacing. Then if we plug that in for T sub S in this expression we get the expression here. If we look at this expression N sub data is a number of carriers that have data within an OFDM symbol. Now this is always going to be proportional to the number of points in the FFT. And if we combine that proportionality with the ninth over 8 depending on the cyclic prefix then we can throw all that into this constant alpha. And if we replace delta F by F of S over NFFT, then the NFFTs cancel out. And we get that the data rate is proportional to the sampling rate. And the sampling rate is directly related to the bandwidth. So according to this expression here, if you increase the bandwidth, you increase the data rate, although we're keeping the intercarrier spacing constant. Also in this expression uh, here, we're basically doing the same thing where the number of carriers that carry data is proportional to the FFT, the number of points in the FFT, and this is a very nice expression shown over here. For all the bandwidths of interest for scalable OFDMA, delta F is constant, and this shows how the data rate increases and decreases with the number of points in the FFT. By the way, here's a nice table from this article uh, from the WiMAX forum which gives example system parameters for a mobile WiMAX system. We're operating at a frequency of 2.5 gigahertz. The duplex is using time division duplex or TDD. The channel bandwidth is 10 megahertz. The distance between base stations is 2.8 kilometers so you get an idea about the coverage. The minimum distance from the mobile to the base stations is 36 meters. The base station height is 32 meters and the mobile height is 1.5 meters which is what you would expect in a for example vehicle environment. And the base station transmits at a maximum power of 43 dBm and the mobile terminal transmits at a maximum power of 23 dBm. Obviously the base station can be transmitting at a higher power now here's an interesting parameter also that the base station noise figure is 4 dB 
whereas the mobile station's noise figure is 7 dB and as we know the in order to reduce the noise figure you had to increase cost and do a better design which we can afford to do in the base station compared to the uh, mobile station. More importantly I'd like to point out that the low noise figure in the base station increases its sensitivity in order to receive packets from the mobile stations. So this table will give you an idea about some of the system parameters used in a mobile WiMAX environment. So let's summarize the scalable OFDMA again. We're basically showing that as you increase the bandwidth you actually increase the number of points in the FFT in order to keep the spacing between the OFDM carriers constant at 11.161 kilohertz. This guarantees that in the worst case scenario for for example a 20 microsecond RMS delay spread you have flat fading for each carrier and as we indicated even for vehicle speeds of 35 meters per second the carrier spacing is adequate enough such that the intercarrier interference due to Doppler shift is less than for example minus 24 dB.